Racing at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on the summer course, Wednesday, the 19th of April, 2023. And I'm joined by Graham on the line. Graham, how are you doing? All good. Thank you, Rahil. In fact, I'm coming to you from Johannesburg. I'm up in Johannesburg for the National Yelling Sales, which take place on uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, so I arrived in Johannesburg late yesterday afternoon. And uh, beautiful weather welcomed me here on the high felt. Yes, yeah, certainly looking forward to uh, seeing that sales and uh, seeing what uh, does go for some big uh, cash. But uh, racing on witness day, nine races on the program and race number one starts at uh, 12 o'clock. So it is a, an early start, 1,100 meters the distance for the very first race. And when we have a look at the fixed odds uh, betting market, Blue Holly, your current favorite at 33 to 10 Speeding Bullet 9 to 2 along with Paratrooper and then it's 5 to 1 and better by those. Now, just having a look at the comments regarding the three first timers here, Vaughan Marshall did mention that Paratrooper will need further and the off this Justin Snaith run is number 10, get impressed. The confidence is there, smart Colt and will go nicely on debut. But the market is telling us a different story. Paratrooper 12 to 1 down 9 to 2. Yeah, the market is certainly telling us a different story. Get Impressed is drifting, opened up around 3 to 1, is now around 5 to 1. And as you mentioned, Paratrooper from 12 to 1 into 11 to 2 into 9 to 2. Uh, so, yeah, we follow the money, I guess. But I'd like to see whether, whether the support follows through. Blue Holly, as you mentioned, is the early favorite. I've been very strong on the daughter of Gimme the Green Light in both of her last two wins. She's done me proud. Uh, both those wins were over 1,000 meters. Both those wins were at Durbanville. I think she's suspect over the 100 metres extra down the lane at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. So I certainly don't make her a good thing. I think this raid is wide open. We were chatting off air. This is not the first thing of the bipod. But if it was, I would not hesitate to put the field and rather go through two out of 10 than naught out of four. I think Tyrion Lannister is going to improve a great deal. Good run behind Outlaw King. He had uh, a number of these uh, runners, including Speeding Bullet, behind him on that occasion. He surely must improve with the benefit of that run. So 8-1 to one looks fair value. He's likely to improve. Even a horse like Pompey Warning, when you look at his form, you say, what the hell, you can't put that in. But when he was disqualified, he ran second close up behind Speeding Bullet. Uh, he's been gelded. So that run alone, uh, you, got, you can't ignore Pompey Warning for, for trifectas and quartets. It's a tough, tough start to the day. I'm not going to stick my neck out. I think watch the betting trends right until the off time. Nice race to try and catch the quartet. Watch them go down to the start. And let's see what happens in the market before they jump at 12 o'clock. Graham, what's your thoughts on uh, horse number eight, Dumbledore? Because last time out, it was a terribly disappointing run. And perhaps do you think he was just drawn on the wrong side of the course on that day? I remember a horse by the name of Captain Arrow, I think it was, from the Bass Yard, who was drawn in uh, gate number 14. And he was quietly fancied as well. And he ran a below par race. So do you possibly think that the draw was the negative up the lane on, uh, on that day? It can't just be the draw that accounts for a run like that, running 16th of 16, 13 links behind the winner. That can't just be down to the draw. So clearly something went wrong. He was described as being restless, awkward, unbalanced. His prior run, his debut run, was a bit of a surprise for the connections, I think, when he made all the running to beat Kaya Mai. Kaya Mai is still a maiden, so there have been eight runners from that form line, zero winners. So I'm sitting on the fence with Dumbledore, and it's interesting that the money's coming for his stable companion, Paratrooper. So yep. it's a race I don't trust. It's a race that I'm going to delay my final selections until just before the off. Yeah, certainly a very tricky start to the day. And as you heard from Graham, a race where you could possibly do well to catch a quartet. It could pay a decent dividend. Now, race number two on the day, 20, uh, rather 25 to 1. 1,100 meters, and this will be the start of the buy pot. And your fixed odds betting market has got horse number six, Golden Sickle, at the top of the boards at 15 to uh, 15 to 10. October Morn has found early support, 11 to two down, three to one from the Candice Bass Robinson Yard, eight to one about Green Valkyrie, 10 to one and better bar those. Now Golden Sickle, she's uh, certainly a filly that's got the ability. She won quite a nice race on debut, and then she's been beaten behind. Perhaps the better horses in her last two starts, Raskova and the Charleston. She tried to make all the running last time out, but in this type of lineup, she certainly looks to be the horse that they all have to beat. But it wouldn't be a surprise to see perhaps one of the first timers, if not further improvement from one of the race runners. And number two, more than a dream. I thought she's quite interesting given her last start, where she made up quite a few positions and she was beaten behind Distant Winter in that. Uh, small feature and uh, I think I thought she could make a significant improvement and she's currently priced up at 16 to 1. 
Yeah, she certainly is one of those that have made a note of. I'm just worried that she might want to go a little bit further rather than step back in trip. But she's had two runs under the belt. She's quite experienced now. It was a pleasing run behind the very decent distant winter last time out, as you say. So she's certainly won for the shortlist. I do think that Golden Sickle sets the standard. I do think she's a worthy short-priced favourite. And those uh, players, bipod players with smaller budgets, might want to consider number six Golden Sickle as a banker should run into the first two, given her form coming into the race. The money for October Morn is interesting. She's uh, beautifully bred. She ran fourth on debut behind Sidley, and uh, she will continue to improve, so October Morn. But she also steps back in trip, and that's a little bit of a worry for me. Another possible improver is number 10, Trey Schick, was backed on debut from 7 to 2 to 28 to 10, didn't perform well, but she was green and the saddle slipped. So I think you can forgive her that below expectations run on her debut and watch for improvement from number 10, Trey Schick. But my very firm choice will be number six, Golden Sickle. Looking for improvement from numbers two, more than a dream. Eight, Green Valkyrie. Nine, October Morn. And ten, Trey Schick. Yeah, horse number six, Golden Sickle, the one to beat in race number two, which is the start of the bipart. Next up, race number three, and uh, race number three will be the start of the place accumulator. And this is a class three event for the Phillies and Mares over 1,800 meters. And uh, Graham, this is a race that I don't like at all because a number of these horses met last time out on that run behind Miss Greenlight. And there's not a lot to choose between them, just strictly on the weight. I know perhaps the likes of Veronica Mars could be held here. But it's, it's a race where I'm going to try and uh, go the field, if not just uh, delay my selections until, uh, until possibly race day and see if there are any scratching in the race because I think it's very, very tough. It is a trappy little race. As you mentioned, uh, many of these runners uh, raced behind Miss Greenlight on the 25th of March. Uh, but that was at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. Different kettle of fish over 1,800 metres on the summer course at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. If one takes that form at face value, then number three, Fleeting, is certainly one to beat, and uh, ahead of Academic Gold. Those two finished close to each other, and then there was about a two-length gap to Bye Bye Bombshell, Follow the Star, and Veronica Mars, who all ran in that race behind Miss Greenlight. I'm going to rely on the form. I think number three, Fleeting, will be my first choice. She's running consistently well. Uh, number five, Bye Bye Bombshell, I expect to be competitive. And number six, Academic Gold as well. But you're absolutely right. When you go through all of the collateral form lines, then there's little to choose between all of these runners. And Bankering Gold and Sickle in the first leg of the bipod, I'm going to include the field in the second leg of the bipod to make sure that I get through two out of six or two out of seven rather than perhaps uh, go out even because it is a trappy little race. Uh, they're all on top of each other. You can't nail your colours to the mast here, although do make the consistent number three fleeting the one to beat. Yeah, if you can get through race number three with a limited spin, then you've done very, very well because it does look to be a tough start to the place accumulator. Next up will be race number four, which is going to be the start of the pick six, 1,200 metres of distance. And this is an open maiden for the Phillies and Mares. Now, these open maidens, we know that the weights are obviously structured differently. 60 kgs going all the way down to 52 and a half. Favorite Apple Catcher, 9 to 2, down 7 to 2. Go Like Flow, 4 to 1. Bo Cup, obviously the interesting first timer, she's at 5 to 1. It's Dreams Go By, first time from the Adam Marcus Yard at 7 to 1, along with Simply Beautiful. Then it's 12 to 1 and Better Bar. Those now. Graham, last time out, Apple Catcher, we were so strong in her, but what happened on that day? I mean, just nothing at all. She found nothing when put under pressure, and that was at Hollywood Bets Durbanville. She ran. I would say tailed off last. Well, second last. Yeah, that was an absolute shocking performance. Uh, it's hard to know what went wrong on that occasion. So I'm going to judge on her previous two starts uh, over this course and distance at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth over 1,200 metres. She ran second on both occasions. Second on debut, narrowly beaten by a touch of grace, who's also come out to win a couple of races since then. So that form has certainly been franked. Then she ran second to Hir Komiboki, and we saw Hir Komiboki come and win again. So they are now multiple winners, both of those, Touch of Grace and Hir Komiboki. So I'm going to give number six, Apple Catcher, another chance. I think she's quite easy to back, so she's worth a bet. Richard Faree is in the form of his life. He's riding winners all around the country. And I expect number six, Apple Catcher, to put the record straight. Number five, Go Like Flow on form is the biggest danger, along with number nine, Simply Beautiful. Obviously, if there is significant support 
for either number seven, Dreams Go By, or number eight, Boer Carp. As you say, they're both very well bred, particularly number eight, Boer Carp, who was meant to make a debut the other day, but was scratched before that engagement. Um, if there is significant support for either of those two runners, then you have to make a note of that. But in the absence of that support for the time being, I'm going to be very, very strong on number six, Apple Catcher. Yeah, Apple Catcher to possibly get it right this time around with uh, Richard Furrier board. And a horse at uh, perhaps a bit of a price to throw into the mix, the likes of uh, number three, Gift from Heaven. She's uh, got a lot less weight to carry this time around than she did last time out. And she's, uh, she's a horse that uh, she's difficult to catch, but uh, if she arrives and she tries to lead them a merry dance, she's uh, certainly a horse that could go uh, nicely and I want to include into those exactors at around 16 to 1 the well-bred daughter of Karari who hasn't quite uh, lived up uh, to uh, that pedigree as yet and whether she will it's uh, difficult to say with her current form but I want to keep an eye on in race number four. We're going to move along to race number five 1400 meters the distance it's a maiden plate the start of jackpot one and your favorite here is Oliver 28 to 10, down 5 to 2. Contiguous at 7 to 2. Robertus, he's uh, drawn deep. He's at 4 to 1. And then it's 8 to 1 in better bar. Those. Now we're chatting off air. And Oliver certainly does uh, look to be the horse that they all have to beat. And he poses as a potential banker. Certainly going the right way. The likely race son of twice over from the Adam Marcus stable. Keegan DeMello takes the ride. He's only had the three starts. Ran fourth in his penultimate start. And then third last time out behind Numzan. So he's heading the right way. He races again over 1,400 metres. Again, a worthy favourite at around 5 to 2. So he is the one to beat. I think he possibly has most to fear from number 12, Robertus. Um, I remember Candice Bass Robinson when uh, the son of Canford Cliffs came, uh, came out on the 5th of April after quite a long rest. She wasn't expecting too much. Said would need to run badly and, and yet ran a very, very good third of 11 behind lunch money. Does have an awkward draw to overcome. Second run after rest, that could be his downfall. But he does warrant respect, along with number eight, contiguous. But I think, again, this is a race where you can narrow down. We've got the field in race three. So, and bankering perhaps in the first leg of the bipod. Uh, yeah, you can narrow this down. I think number seven, Oliver, is going to be a tough nut to crack. But I do have respect for number 12, Robertus. Yeah, Robertus want to uh, possibly go uh, or add in for a bit of cover if you... Uh aren't too convinced about number seven, but both Graham and myself, we would number seven, Oliver, and we're hoping that he can get it right at the fourth time of asking. Next up, race number six, which is a class three event for the Phillies and Mares over 1,400 metres. Get your bets on for race number six by three o'clock. Favourite, give me a first at 33 to 10, four to one about Bonica, 11 to two, Ms. Greenlight, Fun Zone, Busy Lizzie, it's then a seven to one. And better bar those. Now, give me a first. I thought she'd run a nice race last time out. And she did exactly that. She was doing her best work at the finish with Keegan Miller aboard. And she's got a quite a huge draw turnaround now. From being drawn 9 out of 10 to draw 2 out of 9. And she does have a third run after rest. So I'm going to be with her. I think uh, she's the horse that's going to go very close in the race. And I think she's the one that uh, they all have to beat here. We're slightly different. Uh, I obviously respect uh, number two, give me a first. She's coming along the right way, as you mentioned. Uh, she'll be having a third run after a rest, as you mentioned. So she'll strip very fit. But I'm going to, I think that number six, Miss Greenlight, uh, can continue to hold a form. She's well treated at the weights here, surprisingly enough, despite the fact that she, she won last time. She's only gone up two points in the merit rating, and she's actually better off with some of the runners here. So that's. Uh, Quite a mystery, but uh, number six, Miss Greenlight, is well handicapped and should go well again. But this is another one of these trappy class three fillies and mares handicapped over 1,400 metres. There are not too many runners you can dismiss. Number one, act naturally, has got to have a chance. You've mentioned number two, give me a first. Number three, Queen of Sparta, was a good run behind Shantastic. In fact, on that occasion, she finished ahead of Miss Greenlight behind Shantastic. Bonica, always there and thereabouts. Treasure Hunt can surprise. Fun Zone is threatening. Placed in its last three starts. Um, Oscar's winner, close up behind Shantastic again in that race, was slightly ahead of Miss Greenlight. And Busy Lizzie, her post maiden form has been excellent. So, again, this is a race where I'm not prepared uh, to nail my colours to the mast. This is a race, again, where I suggest, even from a place accumulator and certainly from a bipod perspective and all the other exotic bears' perspective, you've got to go as wide as possible. And again, it's a possible field race. You're entitled to like number two, give me a first as I'm entitled to like number six, Miss Greenlight. But there isn't a result here that would absolutely surprise me. 
Yeah, not at all. Uh, there are quite a few talented horses in this lineup and horses that are holding their form quite nicely. But I'm going to take my chances, play accumulator wise, and I'm going to bank a number two. Give me a first. I just think with 53 on the back and draw number in gate number two, peak run, I think she's going to go very close in this race. But uh, another race where you can make a case for several runners. Race number seven, another race for the fillies and mares. And this is an open maiden over 1,600 meters. Get your bets on for race number seven. By 15.35. Fixed odds betting market has got Fellow and Cora at 3 to 1. On board, 4 to 1. You crack me up, 6 to 1. 6 to 1, Mothership. Anna Karinina, it's uh, Hang Out the Stars at 8 and then 10 to 1 and better by those. Now, Grandma, I want to start with number 1, You Crack Me Up, because she's a filly that uh, clearly has the ability, given that she was heavily supported on debut into odds on. And uh, yeah, disappointing, I'd say. And then. Given a rest, a long rest, she's now having a third run after the rest and she's drawn in pole position going over 1,600 meters with just 56 and a half kgs on the back. I think that we can expect huge improvement from this daughter of uh, William Longsword. Definitely one for the shortlist. Definite improvement expected, but she clearly has her issues. She's only had the three starts. She made a debut on the 21st of February, 2022. Then, as you mentioned, after that well-backed debut, she was off the track for more than a year. It is significant that she has a third run after rest. She emptied out quite quickly behind Cloud Chaser last time out. That wasn't a strong field. She also was difficult loading, so hopefully she doesn't use up too much energy before the start of the race so that she can capitalize on the fact that she's drawn in gate one. But this is her race to win. If she's got any of that sort of ability that the connections believe she showed when racing first time out and being heavily supported, then this is not a tough race to win for you, crack me up. Fellow and Cora has obviously got form. Uh, doesn't often trouble the winner. I really think this race, the key horse here is number nine on board. I think quite easy to back. Has only had the five starts. Has uh, run second on two occasions. Uh, tackled 1,600 metres for the first time in her career. I think this will be right up the alley of the daughter of Mercy Gedericks. So I'm quite strong on number nine on board. I do have a, a lot of respect for you crack me up because that's the one that can improve. That's the unknown quantity but I think that on board should have the measure of the balance. I'm going quite strongly with number nine on board. Respect for number one, you crack me up. And then obviously, number two, fellow and core has got a chance. Uh, number five, mothership, trifecta chance. Number six, Anna Karenina, trifecta chance. And also number 12, hang out the stars. But my hopes are going to rest with number nine on board. Well, perhaps a few swingers and exactors with numbers one and nine in race number seven. And uh, I think the positive for on board is that uh, she doesn't come from that form line behind Cloud Chaser. Where seven of uh, these uh, 12 runners do come from that form line. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't be a surprise if uh, the form were to be reversed with a number of those runners from that form line. But Graham was horse number nine on board in race number seven. Race number eight, the penultimate race on the day, a KP stakes over 2,000 meters. 10 past 4, the time you need to get your bets on for the penultimate race. Royal Watch, your early favourite and narrow favourite at 33 to 10. It's 7 to 2, Night Ruler. Cosmic Event at 4 to 1. Sudden Song, 5 to 1, 6 to 1. And better by those. Now, when we have a look at the best weighted column, Flower of Saigon tops at 7 points clear of the next, of the next best in the form of number 1, Royal Watch. And uh, Flower of Saigon... Her third last time out beyond the future is bright. Quite a nice run. That was over 2,400 meters. But uh, she's got a lot more weight to shoulder this time around. 57 and a half deep draw. But she's a she's an honest horse, Graham. I don't think we can obviously I don't think we can discount her chances. But she's not going to have it quite her own way, having to carry more weight, taking on the boys once again. Yeah, I think uh, others are definitely preferred. Yeah, she has a chance. She's game. She's genuine. She stays well. In fact, I think this could be a little bit on the sharp side for her. Uh, she likes to dictate in front and she shows courage in the finish. So she can't be written off. Uh, but she comes up against the Justin Snaith Army. He saddles five horses of the nine here, including, of course, Royal Watch, Night Ruler, Cosmic Event, I Want It All. And uh, what's the other one that he saddles? Uh, uh, he settles Silver one Sky. other in the race, Silver, Silver Sky. Sky. So I think Royal Watch, one of its last two starts, has been very well treated by the handicapper. Has only gone up two points for its last win. It meets Night Rule on better terms than it did last time out, so certainly should confirm the form um, with Night Ruler. So Royal Watch will be my first selection. Uh, but 
Pace makes the race, as we said so often before. Brett Crawford has got two live wires in Sudden Song and Global Ally. They both can, they both can feature. And if uh, if I was chatting to to Sheldon Peters instead of to Rahil Radhakrishna, he'd be telling me that Cholima is going to win the race. <laughs> now, this is correct because uh, had a good fifth behind Future Signals and started a good fifth behind Future Signals and then got into all kinds of trouble behind the Futurist last time out. So, so Chalima is also very much alive. That's a stable companion to Flower of Saigon. So it's a field of nine horses represented by three stables. The Snay Stable, the Crawford Stable, and the Cotton Stable. But I'm going to put my eggs in, uh, in the basket of Royal Watch, although not as a banker, but Royal Watch will be my first choice. I think he's in good form. He's a five-year-old son of dynasty. He's come to hand. He's going to continue to improve. He's not been over-raced. He's still got lots of life left in those legs. And I think Royal Watch should continue to, to go on with his current form and may be able to complete the hat-trick. Yeah, Justin Saint certainly has a strong hand in this uh, lineup here. And uh, Royal Watch, after his last two victories, he looks to be a horse on the up. Four wins from 17 starts. And uh, Graham hoping that he can make it win number five from start number 18 in race number eight. Race number nine, which is uh, an open maiden, 2,000 metres the distance for the ninth race on the day. 16.45, the time you need to uh, get your bets on for the lucky last. Favourite Marshall Field at 7-2 to two, along with Run Rudolph Run. 11-2 to two about Donder Storm and Autumn Moon. Give me the best. Then it's 10-1 to one and better bar those. And our favourite number 6, Marshall Field. And he's a horse that I think is going to absolutely love stepping up to 2,000 metres. The summer course, I think it's going to suit him right down to the ground once again. And uh, with Keegan DeMello in the irons once again, I think that Marshall Field is going to go very close to... Uh, Perhaps getting that uh, maiden out away from the informed Lucinda Woodruff yard. I think you're right. I think Marshall Field is the one they all have to beat. Does have it all to do with 60 and a half on his back in this open maiden. Has to give a kilo away to run Rudolph run. But I think the Prometeer form line could turn out to be stronger than the big bopper form line. Of course, I might be wrong in that assessment. But I do think that Marshall Field uh, is more likely raised Will Love, as you mentioned, the step up to 2,000 metres. He's bred for that, being by Ideal World out of a mare by Fort Wood. So you can almost say that this 2,000 metres is going to be his best possible trip even further. So Marshall Field, for me, definitely the one to beat. And again, smaller players, not a bad race to try and take a chance in. If you've got a small pick six perm and you're looking for a banker in the last leg, you could do worse than number six, Marshall Field. Obviously, number 13, Run Rudolph Run. His game is consistent. Uh, he's been placed in his last three starts, fourth, third, second, which suggests a win is imminent. And uh, he clearly rates a big chance, particularly with Elder de Mayer aboard. Uh, look at the jockey-trainer combination. Elder de Mayer's had nine rides for Adam Marcus for four wins. That's a huge strike rate. So you've got to respect uh, number 13, Run Rudolph Run, although I do believe that Marshall Field may be able to beat him. Donda Storum at the weights, always a threat. Finished ahead of Marshall Field behind Prometeo, albeit narrowly. I'm expecting Marshall Field to overturn that. Autumn Moon does enough to keep you interested. Philadavian and Gimme the best. They also rate chances. Uh, but I'm going to narrow this down to number six, Marshall Field, ahead of number 13, Run Rudolph Run. Uh, I think it's fair to say if you look past number six, Marshall Field, it does uh, tend to become a bit more open and uh, you possibly need to go wider, uh, quite wide in the last leg off that pick six and place accumulator but for both Graham and myself it's number six Marshall Field at around seven to two in the market and we're certainly hoping that uh, Keegan DeMello can have a good day at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Wednesday. Graham it looks to be a tricky card but a card where uh, the punters if they manage to uh, get through with the limited uh, spend in certain legs they uh, could be in for a decent dividend. Well, you know, Rahil, because racing is less frequent now out of season at uh, in Cape Town, whether it be at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth or Hollywood Bets Durbanville, uh, so the race less often and the race meetings thus are well filled with competitive runners and none of these races are easy. It's difficult to nail your colours to the mark. There are no odds on favourites, as the betting will tell you. The shortest price favourite is Golden Sickle at 15 to 10. The rest of the races are all pretty wide open. So you've got to take chances here and there. And for me, the key runners of the day are Golden Sickle, possibly Oliver, and Marshall Field in the last. Those are and, 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 and on board. So 
you take your pick, you pay your money, you take your chances, but you've got to narrow some of these races down because I do think they'd race three and uh, also race six, they possibly field races. Yeah, quite uh, tricky races on the card at Hollywood Best Kenilworth on Wednesday. But uh, Graham, thanks very much for your time and all the best. Have a good week and uh, enjoy the sales. Thank you very much, Rahil. Always an exciting time of the year. All the best, guys. Hopefully you find all the winners on Wednesday.